Hello and welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapers TV show and podcast. I'm your host, Christine Innes, and I am so delighted to have the very beautiful Megan joining me today. Welcome, lovely. Morning, how are you? I'm very good. I'm so excited you're being here and you wrote a beautiful article for us and I'm like, I read it, I'm like, I need to talk to this girl because she speaking my language plus also you love gin too so you know hey you know what can we say um but your story and how you talk about personal branding because I think it's so underrated especially as business owners so thank you so much for sharing your gifts with us um I'm going to put all the links and people can connect with you below but before we dive in deep I want to hand over to you and you can introduce yourself to our audience and then I'm going to ask you some lots of juicy questions. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. Well, I thought you just got me on for my accent. Oh. <laughs> it's the accent. They don't care what I talk about. They just want me to talk. <laughs> Love it. So uh, we are both in Australia, but obviously my accent is not. I'm uh, Scottish and moved over here about 10 years ago. I, like Christine said, love a good gin. Scottish gins are still definitely the best and good ones over here in Australia. But I'm a personal brand strategist and have been doing this unofficially for oh, over 10 years. I just didn't really realize there was a name for it until uh, the pandemic. And I started listening to podcasts and I heard one that someone talking about personal branding. And I thought, eh, that's pretty much what I do. So I rebranded and it's been the best thing I've ever done because it is a free resource that we have. I mean, you spend a fortune going out and getting logos designed and getting your brand colors and, you know, getting every social media channel set up, mm-hmm. a website, all of this sort of things. And really, your face is the only logo that you actually need. Everything mm-hmm. else is an add on and it depends what you need it for and where your audience is. So that is me. I love it. And I think it's so true because I, I have so many people say, oh, I can't decide on a logo. And I'm like, OK, first of all, Choose something that's in line with you right now because your logo is probably going to change anyway. But we need to get out behind the logo. We need to get out behind the products and services and show who we are and why you started the business because you're the best form of advertising for your business. Especially as a small business. If you're in a massive corporate and you, if anyone who's listening has come from a corporate, which most of your audience probably have, mm. you know, you're just... you you're kind of just a number you know once you're in that kind of middle reign you're just a number until you make it to the top and the people who do make it to the top Mm -hmm. it's because they've made a name for themselves they do have a personal brand there's only so much that you can do whether it's your own business you're working for someone you've got Mm -hmm. all the knowledge that you need you've got 10 plus years of that experience you've got a solid network within your industry but what gets you over the line is who knows you who's going to give you those opportunities because they know what you're looking for they know what it is that you do if you're not communicating that properly then your personal brand isn't actually being constructed by you it's actually being constructed by someone else and what they need from you so yeah yeah, we all have one we've got this great logo on our face (laughs) exactly and I feel like you know one of the things why you know I always get my guests to introduce themselves is because your passion shines through Like I can talk about other people, but you are the one that started the business. You're the one who is bringing it all to life. And there's no better person to introduce themselves. Oh, no, no one is going to sell you better than yourself other than your mother. But you can't keep your mother with you all the time. No, (laughs) definitely not. It, it, and it, it's, I feel as though, you know, especially, you know, like I came from corporate, 20 years working in corporate and, you know, you have their vision statement, you have their mission statement, you know, you have their logo, logo and all that sort of stuff. But when you think about it, they employ you. They employ you for a particular skill and talent, you know, to help grow their company. So we need yeah. to actually harness that gift that you were employed for and actually put it into your business as well. Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, there are two sets of people. There are people who are happy to turn up and build someone else's dream. And there are others that will take all those learnings and those experiences and they'll go and do it themselves and they'll do it with their own flair, I guess, because Mm. I guess that's the biggest problem when then, you know, you're sitting there in your office doing your nine to five and you're thinking there must be more to the world than this. And I'm sure I could do this better. And then you have a look around, you go on Instagram and you find, oh, thousands of other people that do what you do 
But the thing is, yes, there's thousands of people that do what you do or sell the product you sell, but no one will do it like you do. Yeah. No one will have those um, those networks that you have. No one will have that knowledge that you have. Yes, you can have a certain amount of knowledge that everyone needs if you're an accountant, lawyer, etc. Everyone goes to university. You've all ticked the same boxes, but no one's had the same experiences and used it in the same way you have. Nobody has niched down to do just agriculture or just do commercial or just do family or whatever it is that you're you're specifically looking at it doesn't mean you don't do other things but that's the one you're wanting to be known for and I think that we get so caught up that oh there's too many other people doing it too many people on Instagram and on LinkedIn and on all these other channels already there's no room for for me there's always room for you because there's yes. so many people out there <laughs> yes absolutely and you know I think that there's so many people out there like on all oh, the markets oversaturated the markets oversaturated and then I asked them the question, well, when have you shared your story? When have you gone and shared why you've done it or why you're in business to start off with? Because that is like so key because like you said, you know, we're all unique individuals and, you know, there's lots of other podcasts out there. There's lots of other, you know, magazines and stuff like that, but what people might want to work with me or they may choose somebody else so it's it's you that is going to be the key difference but you're not giving them, yeah but you're not giving them the opportunity to work with you if you're not putting yourself out there for them to see because you can some people might be sitting there going oh well I work on referrals only well referrals are brilliant there's nothing better than word of mouth and if someone recommends you, you're more than likely going to land that client because it's, it's very strong when someone recommends you versus mm. them seeing you on a, a paid ad or seeing you on Instagram or whatever. But that will only take you so far. You have to be able to find your own channels so that you're bringing in people that are yours from start to finish. And generally speaking, you do that when you have conversations with people. Networking in real life, face to face, nothing will ever beat face to face. If you can get on a stage, it's your face to many faces and um, video, you know, things like this is really great because people can hear you. They can see you. So they get feel like they really know you. Podcasts. Brilliant. There's nothing more personal than being in someone's ear. They're walking around and it's just you and them. Um, you know, pictures. I can see your face. There's a whole array of things. But then don't get caught up going, all right, okay, so I'm scribbling down. I'm about to start my new business and I need a podcast. I need to have every social media channel. I need to have videos. I need YouTube. But no, you don't. No, you don't. You need to find out who that person is you're speaking to. Where do they hang out and how, how do they consume content? Because that's the only place you need to be. Yeah. Um, I think that's the overwhelming thing with, and especially personal branding. We think Kardashian. We think likes on Instagram. No. You might not even need Instagram. If you want it because you love it, fine. But if it's not serving you, you don't need it. Mm. I always say to people that um, you have silent stalkers that you don't realise who they are. Then they're going to be people who are going to watch you, follow you. They might even not even like your page or any, you know, comment anywhere. But when you have the right offer and it's the right time for them, they will show up. I've had that happen so many times, but it's because you're constantly showing up and you're constantly, you know, sharing the right message. When the right time comes, they will be there. So anyone who's hiding right now, you need to get out and you need to be oh, visible. Definitely. I mean, if you were marketing a product or a service and you were, you think about the amount of touch points, somewhere between 70 and 30 touch points that someone has to have before they'll convert and buy you are the product, you are the service. Mm -hmm. So those people need to have those touch points with you. How can you supercharge those touch points? Because if you're going to one networking event a month and you do one podcast a month and you do one post on Instagram a month, there aren't enough touch points. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing a little bit of everything, just concentrate your energy on one thing. If it's going to be networking and you're going to be out there speaking to people and you know people think networking and they cringe and they hate it, but if you find the right network and it's something you're going to regulate, it's actually like catching up with friends as opposed to walking into a new room every time, having to reintroduce yourself. Because every time you do the whole, hi, I'm Megan, I'm a personal brand strategist. Oh, yes, I am Scottish. Yes, from the Highlands. You know, every time you have that conversation, you are starting from scratch. That is point one. I want you every time you go to a networking event, you need to be on point six, seven, eight. So it's the next time when I catch up with you, you go, oh. 
Megan, I've just bought this bottle of gin and I thought of you. Great. Now you're thinking of me when you're looking at your gin. So that's part of my personal brand. You know, you want to have those conversations. And then after like 15, 16 of those interactions, maybe Christine, you know, you and I just become gin drinking buddies and that's brilliant. But we've now got that relationship. So when Tom comes over and says to you, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. And I just don't know how to get myself out there. You go, I know the girl, Megan. So there's how that starts working. And it doesn't always have to be the person that you're speaking to that you're actually trying to sell to. In fact, it should never be that way. And it's the same no matter whether it's face-to-face -face networking, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever the platform, building your personal brand is just showing off the way that you want to be seen, I think yeah. is the, the best way to put it. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that the big thing is, is that everyone waits for everything to be perfect. Like oh. it, it, like perfection. I, I always say to people, I, it, it just doesn't, it does not happen. Like we had, we launched our first co-author book this year and there's a spelling mistakes in there. Now I like, you know, I, I look, I not happy, but you know what? I'm like going, you know what? Done is actually better than just having it sit there and waiting and waiting and waiting. So everyone worries about it to be perfect before they put themselves out there. But I think actually embracing your flaws, embracing all those little quirks about yourself actually sets you apart from everybody else. Well, yes, but also if everything's absolutely perfect, where's the conversation? If yeah. I've got a typo in something, someone will probably come to me and be like, hey, did you mean this? And then we've got a conversation, something starting. Yeah. You know, it's if everything's just too perfect, nobody wants to approach you. Do you yeah. want to speak to the person that's really perfect? Because they're unattainable. You, we need to be realistic. We need to be relatable. And we need to be someone that someone goes, well, I'm actually going to spend time and money with you because I want to be like you and I want to have the same results as you. Um, not maybe be like you, but you know what I mean? They want, they want to be part of that. They want to come along the journey with you. If you're really perfect and superficial, as far as uh, from everything they can see, I'm not going to go near you. I'm going to be too scared to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you, you, you think, oh my God, like, oh, the expectation to live up to that. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's too much. Whereas yeah. if you are real, I, I, I honestly believe I, I, I tell this story a lot because I, I idolized somebody for such a long period of time and I met them in person, but they were so different to what they were on social media to being in person. And that was actually a really great thing for me because I always go, you know what, whenever I show up online, I'm who I am. So when you meet me in person, I'm going to be exactly the same. Yep. And it's super important because it's um, it's really hard. I always look, talk about um, it like um, online dating as well. If your profile picture doesn't actually fit with what, you know, the person's expecting. So that you um, you turn up for your date and you're looking like you're blonde and then the thing you had a short, dark bob. Well, you feel a little bit duped, don't you? You feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the same with any relationship, whether it's business or personal, a friendship, anything like that. So if you are going to be using social media, make sure that your profile pictures are actually representative of the person that's going to turn up on Zoom or in that coffee shop. Because if not, you're going back a few steps. We talked about these touch points. Well, you've already garnered maybe, I don't know, six or seven touch points with a person. You go and meet them and you're a different person. You're back at square one, if not way back before that, because the person is unsettled because it's not what they expected. Um, you know, so I think that's really important and we don't place enough value on that. You know, oh, I don't like getting my picture taken. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And do not airbrush it because if you look like you're 20 and you turn up in your 40, you're in trouble. Like, you know, just so much exactly. um, pressure. Just see you. It's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my little puppy is just um, decided to go crazy. So I do apologize for that. So. <laughs> That joys of working from home. So <laughs> it's, it's all right. The delivery man just came here as well, and I was oh, yeah. expecting a big bang. <laughs> oh, it's it, it, this, and but this is the thing. Like you know, you could edit it out and all this sort of stuff. But this is real life. Like this is what running a business is all about. You know, it. And I am such a big believer in keeping things real. Like I will 
show up for people. I'll say, look, there's days where I don't show up with makeup on. There's days where, you know, my God, the gray hairs are starting to come through. Like, you know, all that sort of stuff because we are human beings. Like it's just life. And the more that we try to put filters over absolutely everything, I actually think it takes more work than showing up authentically. Oh, how tired are you when you work for mm. someone because you've got to get dressed and you've got to like have mm. a certain look for you. You've got to prep for like all of these meetings where you know you've got to sell their their vision, like you were talking about, their products, their services, and things yeah. like that. And don't get me wrong, when you're like if I'm needing to pitch to a client, yes, I get a bit nervous because you're excited, it's yours, it's personal, you want yeah. it. You like it, you actually don't just want it, you need it, it's your business. Yeah. But you get such a buzz from it. And a lot of people will get a buzz if they work internally in a corporate as well, because people do get buzzes from winning things, but it's a lot less stressful when it's just you. And you also set the rules. If you decide that, you know, you're, you were casual on a Wednesday, that's fine. You don't have to wait till Friday. Mm-hmm. If it's that you do Zooms, that's fine. If it's coffee, you've got a special coffee shop you go to, like whatever it is, the postman yeah. comes during the, a meeting. Fantastic. You know, and we don't worry too much about, oh, well, I'm in the right boardroom because it's, you know, got the logo in the right place. Yes. Sydney with my logo right behind me as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I'm in the I'm bedroom, a so you know, like, hey, <laughs> this is, you know, like it. You've got to do what works for you. And yeah. I remember coming home from work, working in corporate, and I was so tired. And it wasn't until somebody said to me, "You're pretending to be somebody else, and that's why you're tired." Yeah, acting is hard. It is, and and like I now I see actors in such a huge new light. I'm like, oh, no wonder why they get paid all this money, you know, because it is hard work to pretend to be somebody, mm-hmm. you know, for such a long period of time. Yeah, the majority of your day. I mean, most of us work nine to five if we're lucky, but if you work in a corporate, if you're getting out at five o'clock, starting at eight. <laughs> um, you know, that's a long time to be on, yeah. to be switched on. And then when you go home, like those, yeah. everything else struggles. Like how many of your hobbies did you give up? Mm. You know, like how many of your other things that you love doing did you give up or time that you gave up with spending with kids or with your parents yes. or whatever your thing is? Because that always comes first. Whereas when it's your business, it's your brand, you know, I, I go, oh, well, Wednesdays? Well, I don't work Wednesdays. Maybe I'll work on a Sunday because I can if I want. But, you know, Wednesdays are my day with my son. There you go. That's what we're going to do. Um, or there's some things happening you've got a show on. Oh, great. Let's move things around because mm. you can. And it's that, you know, asking for time off or saying that you're not feeling well. Like, it's always a bit of a pressure to go to your boss and say, hey, oh, sorry. You mean, oh, I can't come in today. You feel like you've got to struggle in, although you shouldn't because and I've learned that the hard way. You, you struggle in because you think you should but really you're just spreading your germs and I think COVID's probably highlighted how yeah. terrible that an idea that is exactly. um, but you feel like you can't or oh my kids got this on like you feel yeah. like you're a burden no this is my rules it's my thing this is mm. and you know what my son is part of my brand because guess what he fired me <laughs> yeah well I've actually made my dog like part of my brain now I'm like if she comes with me to meetings and I'm like you know well hey I'm going to actually pres- um, have a stand at an expo in June and I messaged the lady and I said oh I've just got to organize someone you know for my my puppy she goes no bring her like she's part of your and I'm like okay thank you no worries like you know I'm there (laughs) but you know it's like never mind the sweets on the table bring the puppy that's it she goes she will be the at the star attraction which yeah she will be that's okay um I'm a little biased but that's all right (laughs) so that's okay um, my cat before I had my son and obviously I've got six months old so obviously he takes a little bit you know a bit more special these days but my cat King Julian he was the highlight of my Instagram mm-hmm. basically if I talked about personal branding or LinkedIn or anything I'd be like oh yeah yeah a few questions yeah. anything about the cat just give me more about the cat more pictures of the yes. cat I was like I think I'm just turning up for the cat here yeah. it's not really my business <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> Well, I love what you're doing. And I think this is so needed for anybody starting out in business because I, I you know, when I, when I read what you did and, you know, read your, your blog article that you did for us, I'm like, yep, like everything you said is so on point. And anyone starting the business, you need to go over and chat to Megan um, because you need to really 
encompass who you are so you can actually grow your business really authentically. So I just want to say thank you so much. I love what you're doing and I, any way I can support you, I'm there. So thank you so much. No, thank you. You totally are supporting. I just, I love all the people that you're bringing together for your magazine and your podcast and I've been dipping into them and there's just a wealth of experience and knowledge in there, which I think is fantastic. And if you're starting a business, you need that. You need to look at the people you actually respect, the people you want to actually mm-hmm. emulate, et cetera. Stop looking at the people that are unachievable. You know, don't look at the people that you've just walked away from in corporate. You're not replicating the same thing. There's a reason you've gone out on your own. So, you know, using resources like yours, Christine, is invaluable, I reckon. So oh, thank, thank you very you. much. No, thank you. I, I look so appreciate. I'd love to have you back on the show. We'll we'll chat more about it. Um, but I'm going to pop all the links where you can reach out to Megan below, actually read her blog article as well. Um, so thank you for being here. Beautiful. I really do appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who has watched this episode. If you have loved it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and don't forget to leave any comments below and both Megan and I will reach out to you. Remember to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all.